and welcome to another booktube video from me lauren from lauren and the books i hope you're all having a lovely weekend today's video is something i've been meaning to do for a very very long time and i'm filming this on saturday we've just done our chores haven't we david we have. david's absolutely exhausted after the chores he's really been at it yeah. um and what i've been meaning to do for a really long time is sort out my top shelf david would you mind so much panning up to the top shelf and having a little zoom in so if I just tell you about my top shelf, my top shelf is where my um, where my favourite books go once I've read them. Aside from the um... your forehead's in it still. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, aside from the oh David, if you wouldn't mind zooming into the parts that I'm talking about. Okay. Um, so... I, mean, I don't know what parts you're talking about. <laughs> we'll start here. So over here where the big plant is. Yeah. Um, this has got my. Uh, not only my Penguin Cloth Bound Classics, it started off with my Penguin Cloth Bound Classics, but it's got some sort of cloth bound books here. So I've got some Anne of Green Gables books there that I haven't read yet. Um, a Penguin Classic, which isn't cloth bound, but looks naked and cloth bound. Um, and then on top of there, there's been some some, some seepage, because some of my favourite books, right um, in there. The Vanishing Half and Girl, Woman, Other, they, they've ended up there. If we move across, can you see where We're it moving. says L and, and then the D has snuck away. So in this middle bit, they are so precarious. So Glass Town, Food Anatomy, Run Rebel, etc., etc. They're basically, some of them are balancing on, let's be honest, about an inch of shelf. So that needs sorting. Then if we keep on panning round, we've got some very haphazardly stacked um, Daphne du Maurier's with a, a candle on top. And then I've got some hardback books here with yeah, on yeah, top. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then finally I've got this big... Well, I'm going to have to zoom out a little bit for them. <laughs> They're so blooming tall. That big fat pile of... Um, paperbacks. So there we go. David, would you mind focusing back on me? <laughs> Zoom out. Lovely. So that's up there. And what's been happening is every time I read a book that I know is a favourite or potentially will be a favourite, I've been sticking those books up there aside from the, um, the cloth bound classics. So what there is up there is, how long have we been here, David? Four years worth of accumulation of um, books that I thought maybe were going to be my favourites and probably haven't ended up being my favourites or books that I've put up there and are my favourites and deserve to stay up there so I need to have a sort out of what's up there um, and I'm going to do that by taking everything off and then stacking them all back up so I guess I should do that and I do need David's help to help me out there because it's quite tall you see so we're we'll do that first should we time lapse that? yeah let's would you be so kind as to Michelle visage me into here? Bit of a different angle isn't it so what i'm going to do is i'm now going to sort through this mahesive pile of books um and work out what deserves to go back onto the top shelf what deserves to stay on my shelves if, if i might reread it and what i'm going to either give away or give to somebody else and uh, there are two books that i've removed from these piles when i read those books they were two of my favorite books of, of that year or even of a long long time and um, they're books that i definitely won't be rereading as since those books have been written um the authors have come out with some views that i don't particularly agree with um, i'm not mentioning what they are here mainly to protect myself <laughs> because when i've mentioned before the fact that i'm not reading those authors anymore some people have been a bit crot at me in the um in the uh comments so if there's a book on here that you're surprised not to see it may well be that that that's why it's gone that's the end of it and that's what i'll say so let's start so i've got longbourn by joe baker now i did very much enjoy this book it's a pre pride and prejudice retelling retold from the perspective of the um the the, the servants at Longbourn. Um, I really really enjoyed it i don't think it's my favorite of all time though and i probably won't reread it so i'm gonna give that away oh the black flamingo by dean atta both david and i have read this i did really enjoy it do i want to hang on to it because i do think i would reread that so yeah oh, what am i going to do with ones oh look a bit of my plants died um, that can go over there right ones i think i'm going to keep i'm going to put here for the time being right turning the tide on plastic by lucy siegel very very important book 
Um, and I actually saw Lucy um, perform at the Cake Cake perform. Like I saw a talk with Lucy at the Cambridge Literary Festival. Me and Mercedes went. I think I would revisit this. So that's going to stay. Am I, is it going to go back onto the top shelf? Dean Atta is going. Oh God, what am I going to do? David, how shall I do this? I'll get another table. So things, there's David's tissues because he's got snotty nose. Right, things that are going on the table are going back on the shelves. Things that are um, going on the chair are I'm giving away. So I'm going to keep um, the black flamingo, but that's going back on the shelves. But I am going to put turning the tide on plastic back on my favourite shelf. Um, Home Fire by Camilla Shamsi. Again, this is one that I really, really enjoyed at the time. I don't think I'll reread it. I'm going to give that away. The Tidal Zone by Sarah Moss. I do very much enjoy this. I think I would reread that and I'm going to leave that as one of my favourites. This is also a signed edition that Simon was kind enough to get me. This is Going to Hurt by Adam Kay. That's one of my favourites. Definitely that's staying and deserves a place back on top. Um, and then The Paying Guests by Sarah Waters. I'm going to hang on to that as well. That's my favourite. That's been my favourite Sarah Waters so far. Actually, it might be time for me to read a bit more Sarah Waters. So that's going back on top. Right, then we've got The Amber Spyglass which I am going to put with the other two, Northern Lights and The Subtle Knife. These are absolutely covered in dust. So, Northern Lights, I love these books anyway, but this one was bought from my friend Dolores. To Lauren, my fellow bookworm, I thought you would enjoy this book. It's a fab read. Have a brilliant crim crimbo, love lots, Dolores. And Dolores, who is a dear friend of mine, bought that for me in our first year at university. And then I loved it so much, I went and bought the second and the third in these editions um, from Oxfam Bookshop in Canterbury where we were at university so those are definitely staying and I do often reread those so they're staying. English Animals by Laura Kay. This was one that I loved at the time. Um, I don't think I'd reread it. I'm going to give it away. Leave the World Behind. Now I've read this this year. Really, really, really loved it. It didn't go in my, um, my best books of the year so far because it didn't have much sort of distance between it. I literally filmed my best books of the year on the same day that I finished this and I needed a bit of time for it to sit. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put it on the, put back on the shelf pile because I think maybe this could be a favorite but I still think I need a little bit of time away from it. Our Rainbow Queen by Sally Hughes. This is a favorite of mine. It was a favorite when I read it a few years ago. It's been a favorite this year. It's just a tonic. It is a collection of pictures of the queen in different colors of the rainbow um, and a little, um, not that one, it's got bloody Trump on it. Um, with different, um, with, with like a little bit of information about why she might be wearing this or where the picture was taken. Very much enjoyed it. A new favorite, this is 84 Charing Cross Road by Helen Hanf. Um, very much enjoyed that this year. And then I've got, where's the other one of these? Oh, I've got a poem for every autumn day and a poem for every winter day, both of which have been fairly well thumbed. Oh, I'll have the bookmark out of that one. Um, and a, a beautiful books. I'm gonna keep them, I'm gonna keep them together. I still need to get my mitts on um, a poem for every spring day and a poem for every summer day as well, so they can go back on. Um, Names for the Sea, uh, Strangers in Iceland by Sarah Moss. This is a book that I reread all the time. Um, it's one of my favorite books. It's a non-fiction book by Sarah Moss who also wrote The Tidal Zone um, about Sarah and her family moving to Iceland um, for a year and talking about what it's like for um, British people to live in Iceland and I just love it and it's just beautifully written and really informative um, and I always tend to read it around my birthday because it's one of my favorite books. So that stays for definite. The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. Now, I really, really enjoyed this when I read this. I actually think I've got two copies of this because I think I bought a copy in a... I loved it so much and I think I bought a copy for my dad and then my dad was like, nah, I don't think I'll like it or he didn't get on with it. Um, so this one's going to go. But yeah, this is a great sci-fi series. That being said, as much as I enjoyed this, there's a second and third, maybe even a fourth book now that I've never got round to. So like, it's all good and well me saying I love it, but I haven't got round to it. Nevermore, The Trials of Morrigan Crow. Really, really, really love this book. I actually get on better with um, the with the the audio books of this, but I think maybe I would revisit that. And it's one of my faves, so that can stay. Oh, and then I've got two copies of Big Bones, which is a favourite of mine by Laura Dockrill. I've got the proof copy, which I love, which has got the illustrations that Laura did herself, um, and then I've got the finished paperback copy. I do kind of want to keep both. It's a bit cheeky, isn't it, keeping both? Maybe I'll give Big Bones away and keep the my this copy. Yeah, because I don't need both, do I? So I'll keep the, the proof because I love it. And I love the and and like that's the book that I read when I fell in love with it. 
Although, did I get Laura to sign this? Yeah, I did. Dear Laura, and thank you for that lovely review. Love, Laura. I'm keeping both. You can't stop me, David. He's listening to audio. He doesn't know. Right, then I've got the Testaments by Margaret Atwood, which has ended up on the top shelf. I wonder how I'd feel about this now. I'd, I would reread this, but I don't think it's one of my favourites. So it's going on the would reread, not one of my favourites. Right, this is troublesome because this is the most beautiful copy of Anne of Green Gables with beautiful French flaps. It's from the Sisterhood series from Vintage. They have a whole host of these with the main character laying with all their hair laid out. This is the copy of Anne of Green Gables that I read and loved. However, David's sister, excuse me, I've got to get up for this. David's sister has since, for my birthday last year, bought me this beautiful cloth bound, um, naked cloth bound editions of the Anne of Green Gables series. So here is Anne of Green Gables, which I've read. And then there's Anne of Avonlea, Anne of the Island, Anne of the Windy Poplars, Anne's House of Dreams, and Anne of Ingleside. Now, that was the order they came in. I just took the ribbon off. So I think that's the order you're supposed to read them. So, I do want to get round to reading all of these, and I definitely will read Anne of Green Gables again. I'm in the same situation as in this book, this particular edition, I searched far and wide for this, but I've now got these. I'm keeping both. I'm keeping the Anne's, they're going back up there, because they can go on. So what I want to do with my cloth bound classics is I want to put them in sort of collection piles. So this will go in a collection pile. That's not going to stay with it, that can stay there. And then when I get to my cloth bounds, I want to separate my penguin cloth bound classics into ones that I've read and ones that I haven't. So I'm going to keep those because this means a lot to me, this particular edition, but I will carry on with the series here. Yeah, right, they can go on the floor because they're going on a different channel. Right, okay, then what have we got here? Oh, then we've got The Beginning of the Night, in the, the Beginning of the World in the Middle of the Night by Jane Campbell, a collection of short stories that I absolutely loved, definitely stay in, definitely saying, oh, I've got this, I really enjoy this. The Gender Games by Ju uh, Juno Dawson. Yeah, this is saying as well. This is a, um, a non-fiction book about um, gender, but written from um, Juno's point of view. Um, I love the tagline here. It says, the problem with men and women from someone who's been both. Um, and also what I really love about Juno um, is that we're the same age and she absolutely loves the Spice Girls, as do I, and she loves Buffy, which as do I, as did I. Um, so there's a lot of um, references there to, to things that I love. So yeah, I really enjoy that as a non-fiction. I think it's great. Two Two Roads books next to each other. Um, then I've got Five Days of Fog by Anna Freeman. This is a proof copy. Um, this uh, is a book about uh, the great smog that fell over London in 1952. And it is um, a historical fiction book about a... Um, a group of shoplifters, a, a female gang called the, I forgot what they're called, the Cutters. Uh, they're a group of female terrorists who have terrorised, uh, te female criminals who have terrorised London for years and are led by um, the, the, the um, narrator, Flory Palmer's mother. I really, really loved this. That's staying. That's staying. I remember reading that when David and I were on holiday in the Florence Forest of Dean as well. Um, Elmet by Fiona Mosley. This is one that I'm going to go. This is actually, when I've been looking up there, I've thought, I can't remember anything about Elmet, so that doesn't deserve a, a place up there. Normal People by Sally Rooney. That is definitely going to stay because I, <laughs> I've never bought myself a nice copy of Normal People by Sally Rooney because I've got this... Um, proof copy that I read and loved and have reread and loved so yeah that's I'm hanging on to that I'm very particular about my special little books then I've got Jane Eyre which isn't on which wasn't on the cloth bound classic side because this is actually it was one of my favorite books of the year so this is going to return to the cloth bound classic side but I'm going to put it in the red pile because I've read Jane Eyre that particular one Queenie by Candice Carty Williams there's no there's no qualms about where that's going or staying oh, that's getting a bit Hi. Loving Colour by Bolu Babalola, another one that I absolutely loved. Um, sure, uh, uh, this is a collection of stories, um, mythical tales from around the world retold, um, centering a black woman at the middle of those uh, myths and legends and folk tales and things like that. So sensual and wonderful. I think I might be playing what's it here when you pile something up really high. The Mercies by Kira Milward Hargreave. I really, really love this book. This is set in Iceland as well. And it's um, set in the, uh, the, the 1617, what's that? The 17th century, always confuses me. That's something I think I'll never get my head around. Um, and it's telling the story of um, an, an island, uh, no, sorry, Norwegian island, um, there's a storm and all of the men from that island uh, from that island are out um, fishing and they all die so it becomes an island run by uh, females and then the church get involved and there's a love story and blah 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 blah. I really really loved it I will definitely read that again maybe in the winter do you think that's going to go David? 
Yeah, that should be alright. I wouldn't put too many more on it. No, I won't. Silver Sparrow by Tiari Jones. This was what's one that the, I really... What's the pole next to it? They're ones that are going back on the normal shelves. These are going back on the top shelf. And those ones are going on the normal okay. shelves. And these ones I'm getting rid of. These I, I wouldn't put any more on there. Okay. What shall I do now? Actually, pile higher. What, until it stops at the ceiling? Yeah. Keep piling it high. Right, okay. So, um, do you know what? Maybe I'll do that here. Right, anyway. Tiari Jones at Silver Sparrow. Um, I read this after having read An American Marriage and really enjoyed this. This is about a uh, two families. Um, and at the centre of both of those families is James Witherspoon, who is a bigamist. He has a family that people know about, uh, a wife and a daughter. And he also has a secret family with, a, uh, with a, um, a, a, another wife um, and another daughter who know about his original family but aren't allowed to tell anyone i thought this was really great i'm gonna hang on to that i'm gonna hang on to that i think it might be downgraded though i think it's gonna go back on the normal shelves because i don't know if it's one of my favorites of all time but it's very enjoyed what would the spice girls do by lauren bravo how the girl power generation grew up this is very fun look at those m papers by the way leopard print um this is very fun and i very much enjoyed it is it one of my favorites probably not but it's gonna go back on the shelves and pop it there i actually think i bought my sister a copy of that as well Right, okay, so next up are two essay collections. Um, in, the, um, in the kitchen, um, essays on food and life and at the pond, swimming at the Hampstead Ladies Pond. There is a third in this series <coughs> that I think I'm gonna buy my dad for his birthday called In the Garden. But I really, really have enjoyed, like, the thing is with essay collections, it's, it's hard to love everything in there, isn't it? Because you're not gonna love everything in there because there's gonna be, with a, anthology there's going to be authors in there that you really like the writing of and really not but as a whole i've really enjoyed reading both of these and got a lot from both of these so i think they deserve to stay on the top shelf i'm just nervous about oh god leave them there do i i don't know no do you know what let's move the... oh. so this is the ones that are going back up that's better right so these the table now is ones that are going on back onto the favorite shelf then on my chair i've got a pile of ones that are going back onto my normal shelves for potential rereading and these are ones that i'm getting rid of bridget jones's diary and other writing this is a new um 25th wedding uh, 25th wedding anniversary 25th anniversary edition i actually have two more of these in the 20th anniversary editions where are they so what do i do with these because I've got here, so this is the 25th anniversary edition. This has got a few, this has got over 100 pages of unpublished material from Helen Fielding. I will, I reread Bridget Jones all the time and really enjoy it, so I'll definitely be reading that. But I've also got the 20th anniversary editions, and I've got Bridget Jones's Diary and The Edge of Reason. And I quite like having a matching pair, because this isn't The Edge of Reason, this is just Bridget Jones's Diary. I think I'm going to hang on to all of these. Yeah, I am. They're my favourites. They're, they're my absolute favourites. Um, Don't Touch My Hair by Emma Dabry is another one I'm definitely going to hang on to. This is a non-fiction book about um, black history told through black people's hair. Um, Emma Dabry, I, I love this and I've read it and listened to it um, and I think it's really, really interesting and just such an original way to tell history. Um, so yes, we'll definitely recommend. Right, Essex Girls by Sarah Perry for profound, for, for profane and opinionated women everywhere. Um, I read this earlier this year and enjoyed it at the time but I've never felt any feelings about it since so I'm going to pop that one on. Same with this one, Of Women and Sort by Gabriella Garcia. Really enjoyed this at the time, gave it four stars, but I haven't had any sort of like tingles of it afterwards, so I'm going to pass that on to somebody, my colleague actually, who I know will love it. Um, it's a Cuban author and I know she'll be really into that. Um, the Bass Rock by Evie Wilde. This is a proof copy. Um, this came out in March 2020. We read this for Patreon Book Club last year and had a lovely time with it. I would read that again. I'm going to put it back on my shelf though because I don't think it deserves to be my favourite because I would definitely read it again but mainly because I can't really remember much about it. Outsiders, a short story anthology. Um, this is edited by Alice Slater um, and has a collection of um, stories about outsiders. Now I really really like this and actually I made quite a few notes in this as well, which is quite exciting. I'm going to hang on to that. Right, we're getting... No, let's do these before we get into Clothbound Classics Arena. Right, my Daphne du Maurier's. Now, I know I mentioned earlier about troublesome writers. I know Daphne du Maurier um, had some very unsavoury views. Um, and I've hung on to these books. Um, I can't answer why that is, but I have. Um, and, yeah, all of these, apart from the breaking point, actually. I didn't love the breaking point. That can go back on my normal shelf. Um, these are all really great Daphne's Warrior books that I've loved. Jamaica Inn, whoop, 
French Men's Creek, my cousin Rachel, the scapegoat, the birds and Rebecca. So they're all definitely going back on the shelf and they just look nice having those stripy, stripy spines together. Then I've got Skincare by Carolyn Hirons. This is an amazing book about skincare um, and I had a lovely time reading it last year um, and getting to grips with my skincare. However, my skin hasn't been great this year. It is much better at the moment, but yes, I'm definitely gonna hang on to that. That's a really, really good book. Um, the Mothers by Britt Bennett and I've also got The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. Read The Vanishing Half and absolutely loved it and then read The Mothers afterwards. I think I'm gonna keep both of these and put them on my favourite shelf and keep them together because they look similar. Oh god, these piles are getting really, really high again. Tiny Moons, A Year of Eating in Shanghai by Nina Minyard Powell. I really enjoyed this and this is a story of her living in uh, living and eating in Shanghai. Um, I put it on my favourite shelf thinking it was probably going to make um, my favourite books of the year but it didn't and I'm actually, as much as I enjoyed that, I think somebody else will read that and get more joy out of it. Same with Run Rebel by Manjeet Man. Very much enjoyed this. It's a book told in verse. Um, but my colleague, who's given a second mention this time, um, her friend um, loves a book in verse and I actually recommended this, not realising that I had a copy of this, um, so I'm going to give that to her. So that can go in the pile of books that are going, but I need to remember to give that to her. The Subtweet by Vivek Shreya, a novel, I really enjoyed this. This was another one I thought was going to go on to my best books of the year so far, but didn't quite make it. I think I would reread that, so I'm gonna put that back on my normal shelf. Food Anatomy is actually one of David's books. This is a sort of, I don't know if you'd really call this a graphic novel, but it's definitely a illustrated guide to different foods from all over the world, from things like pancakes from around the world, um, sushi, different types of sushi, um, cheese in different countries, American cheese, um, and then growing things. They also do, I think they do a few of these. I think there's farm anatomy as well. But yeah, I, in the same, oh yeah, farm anatomy and nature anatomy, which I would really like to own. Um, and in the same way that I loved um, Our Rainbow Queen, this was just very sort of enjoyable to, to leaf through. My favorite page, oh my God, there's a sandwich page. Oh God, my favorite page is probably the pizza page. I also like this bread page as well. Definitely staying on the favourites, loved it so much. Glass Town by Isabel Greenberg, very much enjoy this as well. This is a graphic novel from Isabel Greenberg. Um, this is about the Bronte children. You know the Brontes, Emily, Charlotte, Anne, um, and their brother, Brumwell. And it's about um, an imaginary world that they had made up called Glass Town, where they act as different um, people. And I really like the illustration, Isabel Greenberg's artwork's really great. And I like the fact that the Glass Town stuff is in different colours to sort of normal life. Um, but yeah, very much enjoyed that and we'll definitely read that again. That was one of the first, I remember when it was lockdown last year and we all went into lockdown. Um, that was one of the first books that I sort of really lost myself in. And I remember like, obviously, I mean, it still feels stressful now, doesn't it? But at the time, it felt like the most stressful thing in the entire world. Um, and uh, that was the first time I sort of forgot about lockdown for a bit and just really immersed myself in a book. So another special place in my heart, another special place in my heart. We're getting to sort of like cloth bound, cloth boundy books now. This is Christmas Days, 12 Stories and 12 Feasts for 12 Days by Jeanette Winterson. Um, I actually listen to this on audio every Christmas because as you can see, 12 Stories and 12 Feasts for 12 Days. When you listen to one thing every day, that leads you all the way up from the 1st of December to Christmas. Um, and this has become a real sort of Christmas tradition for me or a ritual, let's say, um, listening to um, Jeanette read the stories and the other parts of it and stuff like that. So it's nice to own the book. And I think maybe this year, maybe I'll, would I make, I, I, I enjoy listening to the, to the, um, to the audio of it so much. Would I read the book? I'm still going to hang on to it. So that's going down there with Cloth Bound Land. Then I've got a few that have made it into non Cloth Bound Land. This is uh, The Pull of the Stars by Emma Donoghue. Um, this is staying on, this was one of my favourite books from last year. This is set in Dublin in 1918 um, and is at the time of the Spanish flu. You're following um, three uh, perspectives. You're following the perspective of a nurse who works on a maternity ward, a volunteer on that maternity ward, and a doctor who is working on that maternity ward, and sort of the intensity of what happens over these three days during the Spanish flu and what I found really amazing about this was that I read this during the pandemic as well and a lot of the propaganda that was going around in 1918 because this was written before our pandemic is very much the same sort of stuff as what was happening there and that was interesting to read at the time so yes a very very good book historical fiction very much enjoyed it god that's so tense oh a girl woman other by Bernadine Everisto this is one that I would definitely reread and is definitely deserving of a place there <gasps> 
Oh God, right, then I've got these next two bits. So Coralie Bickford Smith has um, done these books here. The Fox and the Star by Coralie Bickford Smith and The Worm and the Bird. Um, these are both beautiful picture books, um, beautifully illustrated with sort of like these gold bits and everything. This is The Worm and the, um, the, worm and the Bird. And I read them once and they've just been sitting on my shelf doing nothing. So I'm gonna give those to my niece. She will love them. And her mum, my sister, will love them as well. Um, because, yeah, they just basically sit in there doing nothing. So, yeah, might need to wait for it till she's a little bit older so she doesn't rip them to shreds. But those are going. Right, now we're on to cloth-bound classics. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the cloth-bound classics up so far and I'm going to put them into piles of ones that I've read and ones that I haven't read. And then when I put them up on the shelves, they'll be a little bit more easily differentiated. So the only other thing I will do is I'm gonna separate this cloth bound one, because this isn't a cloth bound classic. This is, it just looks very similar, doesn't it, to these. Um, that's the Jeanette Winterson one. Then I've got the Anne, the Anne of Green Gables collection, which are also cloth bound. And then I've got this that David's mum bought for me, Barchester Towers by Anthony Trollope. Um, however, this is the second in the series. Uh, the first one is called The Warden, so I need to buy and read that before I read this. So I do have plans to do that. Um, but yeah, so they can go separately as well. So let's work through these big pile of cloth bound classics and work out what I've read and what I haven't read. So we've already got Jane Eyre in the red pile. The first one we've got in the unread pile is Orlando by Virginia Woolf. Then Frankenstein by Mary Shelley, I've read. Bride's Head Revisited by Evelyn Waugh, haven't read. Emma by Jane Austen, haven't read. Middlemarch by George Eliot, haven't read. Lady Chatterley's Lover by D.H. Lawrence, haven't read. Oliver Twist by Charles Dickens, I haven't read this. No, I haven't read it. Um, Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen, have read. Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass by Lewis Carroll, have read. Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen, have read. Far From the Madden Crowd by Thomas Hardy, haven't read. Wide Sargasso Sea by Jean Reese, have read. Get them over here. Uh, Persuasion by Jane Austen, haven't read. Little Women by Louise May Alcott, you can tell I've read that because it's really, really fading, have read. Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte, have read. And A Christmas Carol and Other Christmas Writings, have read. So that's there. So that's the sorting out done. I guess you'll probably want to see me put them back on up there, won't you? David will have to help you put the chair back. Okay. Also, just before we start to put these piles on, I've just remembered that I had these. These are my best books from the year so far, which wouldn't fit up there. So they've got to go up there as well. <laughs> Don't know how I'm gonna do this. They've got to go up there too. Oh God, how many have I actually taken off of there? Let me find out. Me and my little um, assistant, to do this right okay so penguin cloth bound ones these are the unread ones Cross, shall we? I'm going to zoom out a little bit. So we've got here my plant. We've got underneath my plant. We've got skincare and uh, glass town by Isabel Greenberg, just because they're quite big and they'd be hard to stand up. Then we've got my cloth bound classics, starting with the ones I haven't read, and then just where Jane Eyre is, they're the ones I have read. Um, and then we also move on to the Anne of Green Gables set that David's sisters bought me. Then we've got my Daphne du Maurier's there, which are um, underneath that candle. They're all on their side. And then we've got a selection of my hardbacks, um, favorite books. And on top of those two are Bridget Jones's diary, the 25th um, anniversary, and then the 20th anniversary paperbacks atop that. Then just where the Vanishing Half and the Mothers are, where the Brit Bennett books, we then move into um, 
non-fiction paperbacks so we've got all of those and then this little stack here is my oh wrong way <laughs> come on that's my non uh, that's my fiction paperback selection so yeah I mean, David says he doesn't, it doesn't look any different, but I, I can definitely see that it looks different compared to the first time round, and I think it looks quite nice. So I'm pleased with myself about it. Well done, me. So there we go, a nice little Sunday sort out for me. Hopefully you enjoyed coming along for the ride. Um, and yeah, let me know some of your favourite books. Let me know your relationships with your favourite books. Do you find it hard to get rid of them? Um, or are you quite happy to do so? And I'll see you all again soon for another Richie video. Goodbye!